a sleep deprivation can activate some abnormalities on the EEG, a bad quality of sleep can also influence or the increase of the seizures. Now, sleep disorders aren't uncommon in the general population, especially if we are looking at our phones too much. But amongst people with an epilepsy, sleep disorders are far more common. And if not addressed, as well as being pretty awful to experience, they can significantly increase seizure frequency and severity, amongst other things. So today we have the amazing clinician and epilepsy sleep specialist and researcher, Francesca Floria from the Philadelphia Danish Epilepsy Center to tell us all about it. I'm a medical doctor. Uh, I'm a neurologist with experience in epilepsy and uh, sleep medicine. Um, I degreed in Italy, in Milano, uh, where I was born and I was uh, living until uh, two years ago. And then I uh, met uh, some years ago my husband, who is Danish, <laughs> so I moved to Denmark. And now I'm working at uh, the Danish Epilepsy Center and I'm uh, uh, making there a PhD. Fab. And I can say to everybody, having met, um, of course, you, Francesca, face to face and others in the team, brilliant lot of people. Honestly, when we met and, and I listened to your presentation um, at the SEN 2A and SEN 8A conference, I was like, delighted to hear you talk about sleep and the importance of sleep in the health, um, overall health of humans, but also in this case, especially people with an epilepsy. Can you tell us a bit about that, please? I have always found fascinating sleep. Uh, and so I studied it uh, during my um, study course. And uh, I became an expert uh, through an exam uh, in Italy. And um, I, I was uh, visiting for sleep medicine uh, outpatients uh, in Milano. And now uh, I'm um, uh, studying the sleep in uh, epilepsy um, and in epileptic encephalopathies uh, like SCN 8A. I think it's very important to study sleep uh, because there are many relations between sleep and epilepsy. Uh, often, uh, if you sleep better, uh, also the frequency of the seizure uh, can decrease. And um, uh, also between sleep and behavior, uh, because uh, of course, uh, if you have a bad sleep during the day, you can have somnolence, uh, you c your performance at school if you are a child or at work if you are an adult uh, can be uh, not so good as, uh, uh, as you would like. And, um, and of course, it can have an impact on the quality of life, especially uh, in patients with uh, encephalopathies, severe encephalopathies, if they can't sleep during the night, this can be difficult also for their parents and their caregivers. Uh, so I think it's very a topic uh, where it's very important to focus on. Sleep is important to everybody, right? But why is it, a, I mean, you mentioned that lack of sleep can contribute to increased seizure frequency. Can you tell us a bit more about that, please, in people with an epilepsy? One important factor is to consider uh, the uh, presence of seizures during the night instead of presence of seizure during only during the day. Mm -hmm. And often when there are seizures during the night, of course, the sleep architecture is disrupted and the sleep can be not good. On the other hand, uh, there can be um, a bad sleep that can influence uh, more seizure. When we make the electroencephalogram uh, to study uh, the brain activity, um, one of the um, uh, exercise that we are uh, making is uh, sometimes to study with a sleep deprivation the brain activity because uh, a sleep deprivation can activate the abnormalities in the EEG and so that's why it's important a good sleep because as a sleep deprivation can activate some abnormalities on the EEG a bad quality of sleep can also influence uh, the presence or the increase of the seizures. And there are also some types of seizures that can be related to particular phase of the sleep. 
for example, uh, uh, seizures that can happen, uh, especially when when a patient uh, um, awakes uh, in the phase from sleeping to awake. Oh yeah, when you're just kind of waking up and you're not fully awake but not fully asleep. You mean? Exactly. It's a very strong relationship and uh, we always need to, to study it and try to improve uh, the, the, uh, the seizure situation and also in general the quality of life. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you say that because obviously seizures are the, thing, the first thing that people think of with epilepsy, but uh, if you, even if you disregard the type, the seizure itself, just having awful sleep is awful for anybody, isn't it? It just makes you feel rubbish for the whole day. Um, I've got an interesting example. I once had, uh, so I didn't, I was flying, um, I think I've said this on another podcast, but I was flying back on a long haul trip and I didn't get any sleep for like 26 hours. Big mistake. And I came home and I was just like really tired, went to sleep, but it was the next day that that lack of sleep caused me to have a seizure. Do you see that quite a lot? Because it's not always an immediate effect. It can be also uh, a delayed effect. It doesn't mean that uh, it's immediately after the deprivation, but the, um, the fact that there was a deprivation can cause this, especially uh, it can be delayed if there are some uh, more factors uh, related. For example, if, the, uh, if you were also tired and stressed uh, uh, for, for, for over uh, things, uh, this can, can, can be um, a trigger factor and also when the deprivation is long. So if a patient uh, has insomnia, a chronic insomnia, then it becomes a deprivation for a long period. One of my friends, her friend was doing her PhD and just didn't get enough sleep. She didn't have an epilepsy, but she actually had a seizure because she didn't sleep for however long it was, an extended period of time. It, that happens more than people realise, right? Yes, it can happen. Uh, it can happen to have a seizure um, in, uh, in persons uh, without epilepsy. Um, because seizures are, are not rare, <laughs> so it can happen. And uh, the sleep deprivation is a triggering factor. So even if you don't have an epilepsy, it can cause somebody to have a one-off seizure. And in this case, it's exactly what we said before. When the sleep deprivation is something chronic, the body um, then uh, is influenced by heat. And, uh, and then there was a consequence. So that's why it's sleep is very important. I was reading this book actually about about sleep and I can't remember what it was called but it was really oh was it called no I've forgotten the name anyway and it was referring to humans um in a, a kind of referring to us as it, as it were chimps and said that we have a one third of us are morning people one third of us are like the up, get up at normal time and then one third of us are night owls what do you think about that and do you think that we should listen to our bodies if we can more it's the chronotype and uh, of course everyone should follow his chronotype we should all follow our own chronotype there are some of us who as you said would like to uh, go to sleep early and then get up early and some of us who would like to go to sleep very late and then get up very late of course we should follow this but often the social life uh, doesn't allow us to do it because uh, of course we need to get up early to go to work uh, uh, and uh, so uh, sometimes we can't follow it but when for example in the weekend or during the holiday we have the possibility yes of course we should follow it and then there are uh, this is in normal conditions then there are some conditions in which this um, uh, rates are uh, exaggerated, so too early or too late. It means more than two hours um, uh, thinking about normal social uh, and the daily uh, light and night cycle. 
uh, delayed or anticipated, and they are sleep disorders. In this case, they are called sleep disorders of the circadian rhythm. I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but people with an epilepsy are more likely to have a sleep disorder. Is that correct? Yes, it's um, a relationship between sleep and epilepsy in both sides. So people right. with epilepsy and with seizures, especially when they are during the night, more often experience a bad sleep. And people with insomnia can have seizure, as we reported some examples before. So it's a relationship in both the side. And then in epilepsy, there's also uh, always to take in consideration the medicines that people are taking because they can have an effect on sleep. There are some that can increase the sleep uh, and some that can decrease the sleep and some that can modify the structure of the sleep. Because of course, it's possible to study the sleep on the electroencephalogram and then that's what I'm doing in my research study. Uh, and uh, you can see how it can change uh, not only if you have a real sleep disorder as classified from the international classification, but also uh, it can really change um, if you have seizures during the night uh, or also seizures during the day or if you are taking medicines. Uh, uh, so we really see a different architecture. And given sleep is so important, especially for people um, with an epilepsy, I have another example. So I broke my foot in three places. It was horrible, right? But it meant that I couldn't exercise very well for a long time. And that made it really hard to get to sleep because you haven't expended all this energy. And so I, I just thought, is this a good example sometimes of how people need to keep an eye on their sleeping pattern and sometimes make adjustments in their lifestyle to try and accommodate things um, so that they don't, I, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I still struggle, don't get me wrong, but it, what do you think about that? Changes in lifestyle and things? It's the first thing. When we are talking about insomnia, the first thing we should take in, in consideration is the lifestyle, because mostly the cases of insomnia are provoked by bad habits. So we should always have uh, the same routine before going to bed, not a too long exposure to videos. Uh, now it's so common. Sleep hygiene. Exactly. So, and this is important. Try to go to bed always at the same time, following the same routine, doing relaxing things before going to bed, uh, having a, a dinner not too heavy, not with too many carbohydrates and fat. Um, and alcohol as well, if you drink, it can help you get to sleep, yeah, but can affect your... Yes, it's, it's, um, it's not suggested because it's true, it can help, but only if you are taking just once. Because if you are taking in chronic conditions, then it doesn't help because um, uh, the alcohol takes all the receptors uh, that uh, can... Um, uh, be related with the molecules uh, that favorite the sleep. And so it becomes more difficult to fall asleep if it's chronic. And I've heard, I've also heard that it affects your quality of sleep as well. So yeah. it can make it easier to get to sleep, but then halfway through or within some part of your sleep, it actually make it, you can be more likely to wake up or you get restless and things like that. Yes, it's also true. Yeah, yeah. Restless is also uh, a sleep disorders, also frequent uh, and also absolutely not pleasant. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And also here yeah, there, there, there is the possibility to investigate it and, um, and then to, to find the treatment when it's necessary. And sleep apnea as well. Sleep apnea is also an over uh, sleep disorders, extremely common uh, nowadays. And uh, yes, it's, uh, it should be studied uh, through uh, polysomnography. When, uh, when, when uh, we have an individual who is snoring um, and uh, during the night the partner can hear apneas or uh, if uh, the subject have a lot of uh, 
somnolence during the day. This is the first thing to study. Wonderful. Well, thank you for this really brief insight, but really valuable insight into the variabilities of sleep and how they affect quality of life of people with an epilepsy, of carers. Again, as you said in the beginning, really important important to note um and to te- well to listen to because their, their lives are equally important um and i guess just your average person because many of us are affected by sleep disorders thank you so much francesca thank you so much for the invitation